coil pod. So first make plenty of coils so you don't have to make any in between when you're forming. Coils should be soft, the consistency right out of your bag, and you can wrap up any coils you don't need to use. You should have your slab ready for the base. And just a little tip, you should put new, uh, paper, any kind of newspaper or something, on top of the banding wheel and tape it so that the clay doesn't stick to the surface, which may be metal or, in your case, plastic banding wheels. Um, first, let's uh, make a nice circular base so we can start out straight. We'll place, try to place the um, base in the center as much as you can. And we'll use a template to cut the circle into, or the base into a nice circle. So I'm going to use the larger slab today um, because I've, my other slab was a little smaller. And uh, this is just a coffee you know, container. I put it in the middle as, of my slab and move the banding wheel as I keep my needles uh, stable to cut a nice circle. You could use a larger disc shape like a dish if you want a larger or a different sized uh, base to start off with. Um, and to cut off the excess clay, I'm just going to use a knife tool or you can use a needle tool for this too to just slice a section and I will I am now cutting through the clay using my knife making sure that I am uh, my hands are stable as I slowly turn the banding wheel so the needle tool I use to trace and the knife tool I use to cut through. Now I'm just inspecting the base and the thickness of the base should be the thickness of your walls that you're intending to make or just a little thicker than the walls. The base needs to um, support the weight of all the coils and um, have enough material there so it doesn't crack from thick thinness being too thin. Building up with coils. So now we're ready to start forming and attaching coils to the base. I have my form in front of me that I have in mind to make. Uh, it's best if you if you're replicating a piece to have it in front of you. If you have a sketch um, have it in front so you can uh, observe the shape as you make your piece. First step is to score the area where you are attaching your coil to the base. Here is where uh, I use the fork and just use the banding wheel to your advantage and spin the piece slowly as you scratch with your fork. I'm increasing the surface area uh, where the coil is going to attach and think of it like velcro this is going to make a better attachment you have to score both sides of the pieces of clay that you're attaching in this case the base and the first coil so now I am scoring my coil The direction doesn't matter. Um, I usually go um, diagonally in one direction and sometimes I go un uh, twice over crisscrossing the scoring. In this case I did um, just went one direction because my clay is nice and wet, uh, nice and soft and I don't think I need an extra layer of scoring to attach the piece. Uh, if you have a spray bottle in your house, these are handy to spray or apply just a little bit of water on the surface. And I'm letting the, the water soak in 
um, to the clay. So give it a few seconds after you spray or apply the water and then you want to start uh, pinching down on the sides with some pressure from the top um, to attach the coil to the base with pressure not necessarily smear the clay onto each other you need to push and actually uh, move the coil, the clay on your coil into the base. Now at the joint, I cut with my knife. Alternatively, you can push down with your finger to make a bevel. A bevel is a 45 degree angle. Score some more for the joint and keep on attaching by pushing down or pinching and while applying a little pressure downwards to attach the coil to each other. Now I'm going over some areas that may be weak and making sure that all around the piece the walls have a nice secure joint by pinching. At the bottom, I even push up with my finger to blend the base into the coils. And now I'll attach another coil to the first coil. Same thing as uh, the first coil, you want to slice off the end and or you can rip it off and make a bevel. Uh, by doing this, you're also avoiding uh, trapping air into the walls because the ends of the coils may look concave and, uh, from coiling, uh, making the coil, and have an air pocket. So when you cut, make sure that there's no hole uh, where you cut off the end. And now, same process, applying water. This time I'm showing you how to apply with a sponge and score the piece. Sometimes you may not even need to score if your clay is wet enough. So maybe we'll try it this time for a second coil. Again, I'm applying water and waiting for the water to soak in. You should see that the water uh, that you sprayed on will become more matte um, when the wa water is absorbed by the clay. Just giving it a few more seconds. And now I'm going to attach starting from the bevel and applying pressure by pinching. Make sure you have nice secure joints. Apply water when you attach the pieces together and then compress by pinching the coils together. Now that there's a little height in the piece, I'm going to start shaping. And uh, for me, I'm going to push out the walls to create the lower part of my sample piece in the left hand side of the screen. I'm pushing out with the inside hand as my outside hand supports the walls and I go around slowly rotating the banding wheel and opening up the sides as even as I can with even pressure, nice and soft, nice and slow. In between processes and uh, before I go any further, there's a point where I want to smooth out the surface and look at my piece closer to its finished form. So here I'll show you how to clean up the sides of the piece using a metal rib. I use the metal rib on the outside and 
I flex the middle rib so it's I can put more pressure using the rib. And one side, one hand is on the inside, supporting the walls as I push the clay or push the middle rib up against the clay onto the hand on the inside. And my inside hand basically controls the shape uh, by being a wall on the interior where my outside hand pushes up against it and smooths out the surface on the outside. You can go back in and push out the walls a little if you need some adjustments on the shape. And you can go back and forth with the middle rib and your hand to adjust the shape. It's also hard to get the general idea of how your piece is looking right now because uh, maybe the top is uneven. So occasionally I do also cut the top of the piece flat. And this is a reductive process which is very much more important as important as the additive process. I'm using my needle tool. Just hold it very still and rotating the banding wheel as I hold my needle tool very still, letting it cut or uh, letting the clay cut itself as it hits my needle. And again, this is just to trace a very even line horizontally across my piece after I have a good line that I made with the needle tool I go back in with my knife tool and same thing I'm keeping my hand very still and rotating the banding wheel across to cut. If you have a thinner piece than mine and softer walls you may need to support the walls more uh, with your hand while you do this. Now we're ready to add more coils. Oh, and I forgot to uh, do one thing. Uh, after you cut the top flat, then always round off the top by pushing down on the edges. Uh, the coil is round, so you want round touching round. So when you cut straight and flat, you always want to round the edge again. And now we're ready to attach the next coil. For the next coil, I'm going to go out wider. And so I'm scoring on the outside to attach a coil on the outside edge. I'm fast forwarding because the attaching part is the same, but um, just one little um, advice. Um, go a full circle around and then cut off the excess coil. So we are going to build uh, one layer at a time now when you're trying to widen or narrow your piece, the piece. After I attach the coil on the outside, now I have my outside supporting the walls as I push out from the inside to widen the piece. And also pushing down, don't, don't forget to pinch and make sure the walls are stuck together. Now for the next coil, I'm going to demonstrate how to move in the walls. So narrowing in the walls. It's the reverse of widening out. So this time the coil goes on the inside edge of the piece. Score both sides and attach the coil on the inside. Again, wetting the surface. This time also I'm going to cut off the coil right where it meets and finishes one turn. Don't forget to cut off the end and bevel the edges where they meet 
and now I'm pushing down on the side making sure the coal is stuck and you can see how my hands are moving a little differently my inside hand is supporting the walls now as I'm pushing more downwards and in from the outside hand you can still fix or shape the lower parts of the clay as you do this and now you see that the walls are going inwards I'm about halfway up my piece smoothing the edges inspecting my form with my hands as well as visually with my eyes your hands should start to become sensors and you should train your hands to feel thickness, dryness, and how the clay moves as you apply pressure. When you're done, make sure you wrap up the piece at least on the top to control the drying. Uh, if the top dries out, you won't be able to attach any more coils. Controlling the dryness is very important in any process and for coil building you want areas where you are going to build up wet and areas where it needs more support, more strength to support the walls drier.